In this video, we're going to be going through the um, the module 1.1 to 1.3 um, skills that we can to match up with our um, I can statement. So our first skill is can I can identify the domain and range of a function using inequality notations. We're going to focus on this inequality notation. It even says that in the um, instructions. So I'm going to look at my x values. Remember, domain is your x's, range is your y's every time. So I'm going to look for my smallest x value to the left. My smallest value to the left is negative 4. Then I write the little sandwich inequality. And then I look at my biggest y va or x value to the right, and that's 2. Um, then I need to look at open and close. This one down here is a closed dot, so I write an equal sign underneath. Up here it's an open dot, so I keep it as no equal sign. Now we're going to do the range. So range, I'm going to look at the very bottom first. I look at my smallest y value, which is negative 4. I know it's going to be a closed inequality, so an equal sign. We put a y, because y is the range values. I'm going to go all the way to the top of the function. My biggest y value is 5, and it's an open dot, so I keep it with no equal sign. Let's look at the domain and the range of number 2. So number 2, we have the smallest x value is negative 3. The biggest x value is 3. I write my little sandwich inequalities. And then I know that this is a closed dot, so I'm going to write an equal sign. This one's an open dot, so no equal sign. The range, I'm starting at the bottom. So my smallest y value is 3. My biggest y value is also 3. Then I'm going to write my sandwich inequality in between. The, the lower value is a closed dot, so I write an equal sign. The upper value is an open dot, so no equal sign. All right, two more of these with this one. So I'm going to look at my smallest x value to the left for my domain. So I'm looking at my smallest x value, it's negative 3. My biggest x value is 0, right? It's on the y-axis, that's x equal to 0. If you have to, write it on there. Then um, it's, I'm going to write my sandwich inequality with an x for domain. And it's an open, so I keep it open here, no equal sign. And then I put a closed, I put an equal sign on the, the bigger number. The range, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm looking for my smallest y value, which is negative 3. My biggest y value is 5. We write our sandwich inequalities. And then um, I'm looking at my dots. So my, my lower one is closed, so I write an equal sign. My bigger one is open, no equal sign. All right, the domain on number four. So domain on number four, my smallest x value is negative three. My biggest x value is negative one. Um, I'm gonna write my sandwich inequality signs. And it looks like here I've got closed dots. And here it's a it's a solid line, so I also use a closed. I use an, an, an equal sign. Okay, on the range, my lowest y value is zero. My biggest y value is two. All right, and then I write my sandwich inequalities. Um, it's a closed dot here, so I'm going to use an equal sign, and it's a closed dot up here, so I'm going to use another equal sign. Okay, skill two. I can identify the domain and range of a function using interval notation. So we're going to focus on the interval notation. So this is the parentheses and the um, bracket. So it's a bracket if it's a closed dot or a solid function and a parentheses if it is an open dot. All right, so domain, remember, is your x's, range is your y's every single time. So I'm going to go with my domain values. So I'm going to look at my smallest x value. Remember, on the axis, my smallest x value is 0. It's closed, so I would draw a bracket. My biggest x value is 4, and it's closed, so I would draw a bracket. My range, my smallest y value is negative 4, and I'm going to draw a bracket. And my biggest y value is 4, so I'm going to draw a bracket. All right, my domain on number 6. So my smallest x value is negative 1, and it's open circle, so I draw parentheses. 
my biggest x value is 3, and it's open circle, so I'm going to draw a parentheses. My range, I go to the bottom. So the bottom y value is negative 5, and it's open, so I draw parentheses. And my biggest y value is 3, and it's open, so I draw parentheses. All right, on number 7, my domain, I look at my x values first. My smallest x value is 2. It's open, so we draw parentheses. My biggest x value is 3, and it's closed, so I draw a bracket. Look at the y values. So my smallest y value is 1, and it's closed, so I draw a bracket. My biggest y value is 3, and it's open, so I draw parentheses. All right, domain. I'm looking at my smallest y value, and it, or sorry, x value, and it's negative 4, and it's open, so parentheses. My biggest y value is 4, and it's open, so parentheses. My range, my smallest y value is negative 4, and it's open dots on both, so parentheses. My biggest y value is 2, and it's a solid line, so we would use a closed bracket. All right, we've got to decide where it's increasing and decreasing, okay? And we're going to list the intervals, which means we're going to use X values, not Y values. All right, so um, I'm looking at my function there, um, and I'm going to do the increasing first and decreasing second. So increasing, remember there's an assumed arrow on the end as we're going to the left. So increasing would be this one here and this one here. So as we're going to the left, my smallest x value is negative infinity. And as we, we stop up here at this point, so my, my x value that's bigger on this one, and there should really be a negative on this. I don't know why the negative didn't print, because it's definitely the negative axis would be negative 1.082. And you could probably put a closed on that. We talked about the union symbol in class. It just means the word and. And so this next interval starts at 3.082, and it goes, remember we're looking at how, which, what's it doing this direction? It's slowly, slowly, slowly getting to positive infinity. Decreasing is what's going on in the center here. So it's decreasing here, and we've got, um, it's decreasing from this x value of negative 1.082, to 3.82. Okay, looking at number two. So I'm increasing right in here. It's the only time it's going up. So increasing, and it's going up from the x value of negative 2.535. And again, I'm just looking at the x value. And then it goes until we hit negative 0 0.131 and then we're going to go decreasing it's decreasing here and here so again the smallest x value and you got to remember the x value is going that way it's to that direction it's negative infinity until we hit this x value here negative 2.535 and then you can use the union symbol, you can use and, you can use a comma. I should have probably put a bracket on that. All right, we're picking it up again here. We're picking it up at that x value. So negative 0.131. And then it goes, the furthest number to the right is positive infinity. All right, we're looking at 3 and 4. So increasing is here. So my increasing from this x value to this x value. Remember, a, they, they were nice to label the points. So the x value I'm increasing from is negative 1.082 to 3.082. And then we are decreasing here and here. Remember, the furthest x value to the left is negative infinity, and the furthest x value to the right is positive infinity. So this keeps going towards negative infinity. So decreasing is from negative infinity to this x value, negative 1.082. And then it decreases again from 
three, this x value here, 3.082 to positive infinity. All right, looking here, we're looking at, this is the increasing there. So it's increasing from x value to x value. So negative 0.786, probably with a closed bracket, to 2.12. And then it's decreasing here and here. So decreasing, and again, the, the leftmost value is negative infinity, the rightmost value is positive infinity. So the leftmost value is negative infinity till I hit this x value, negative 0.786. And then the other direction, it's two point, this x value is where you start, 2.12. And then the biggest x value is infinity. And I should have probably drawn those as brackets. These should have been brackets probably as well. I'm not going to be super picky on the brackets on the test, though, on that problem. All right, we've got to talk about average rate of change. This is probably the one thing we didn't really cover really in depth in class. So we're going to look at average rate of change is just the slope of the line. Okay, or the interval. So if I'm looking at this interval right here, two to four. So remember, that's look. These are, these are x's. So I'm looking from x equals two to x equals four. I have this segment right here. I need to calculate the slope of that segment. So there's two ways I could do that. Okay, I can find a slope triangle. So a slope triangle. Remember, we it's how much we go up and how much we go over, and it has to be exact, like the little crosshairs right there. So I go up two, and over one. So that's my slope, or just two. So that's my average rate of change on that interval is two. I could have also figured out what points these were at. So this one here is at four six, and this one here is at two two. And I could have calculated using the slope formula. So x, or sorry, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I can do this as well. So I've got the 6 minus the 2 over 4 minus 2. So 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, and then divide that out. I still get the same slope I counted with the slope triangle. So the other two, I'm just going to use a slope triangle, but there is multiple ways to do this. All right, so now I'm between negative 4 and negative 1. Notice it's the same set part of the segment. Slope didn't change. So I'm going to draw my triangle and try. Remember, I have to get it to hit the little crosshairs, okay? It doesn't matter how I do that. I chose that one. So at this time, I got up 2 and over 4. So up 2 over 4. Um, it looks like that reduces to one half slope. Then we are looking at zero to two. And if you look there, there's no way to draw a slope. That's a horizontal line, so its slope is equal to zero. All right, so this one, we're still doing average rate of change, but it asks the question a little differently. It says, given the graph above, find the interval where the average rate of change, so the slope, is equal to each of the following. So I need to figure out where the slope is negative one half. So probably what would be really easy to do is just calculate my slopes on each one of these slope, tri all my slope triangles here. So I know that this slope triangle here is up two over one, so the slope on that line is um, two or two over one. This one in here, we said the slope was equal to zero. This one here, oh, it's a down and an over. So down one over one. So that's the slope on this segment is negative one. Then the slope on this segment here, if I drew that little triangle, I am up one over two. So this slope is one half. And then this slope here, I'm going to grab a segment of the line. So I'm down one and over two. So this slope is negative one half. So now that I've done that for each one of them, it's really easy to tell here. So my slope is equal to negative one half on this interval here. And it doesn't matter what notation you use. I'm going to go with interval notation. So from negative eight to negative four. 
then it's asking me where is it equal to negative 1. So negative 1 is in this interval. So from negative 1 to 0. And then it said where's the slope 0? The slope is 0 in this interval here. So from 0 to 2. All right, so this one is all the transformations and the stretching and the compressing. Okay, so describe how the transformation, uh, the graph of f of x is used to obtain the related function g. Use the letter choices that best describe the transformation. So first of all, I talked about it in class, we're not going to use the horizontals, so you can just get rid of those. We're also probably not going to use reflection on y. So you've already got it narrowed down to those. All of them are going to be there. Okay, so um, the reflection across, so the, so let's look at, let's break down the, the problem. So the first thing I always do is the translation. So we're going to translate. Remember, we have to change the sign here. So I'm really got a positive one. So positive one goes to the right one. This is going to do a Y movement. So that goes up six. The three is going to do a, um, a vertical stretch. Remember it, the number in front, if the A is greater than one, it's a vertical stretch. And if A is between, is between zero and one, it's a vertical compression. It gets wide. Okay, so we know that we've also got a vertical stretch. And then the negative in front is going to be the reflection in the x. So reflection x axis. So if I were to type this into the computer, I would have picked A. I would have picked translate right. I would have picked D. I would have picked up E. And I would have picked vertical stretch G. So I would just type it in like this. A, D, E, F. No spaces, no commas, just like that. All right, I'm going to erase here. Okay, so now let's look at this one. It looks like I've got a translation. Translation. And remember, we have to change the sign. So it's a negative 2, so it's actually going to the left 2. And then this is going to go down 4, because that's an up and a, a Y movement. So all I have to do is translation left 2, so translate to the left and then down four. So this answer would have just been C and F. All right, looking at this one, I'm going to go with my translation first. So translation. Um, the negative five, remember we switched the sign, so it's actually positive five. It goes to the right five. Outside the parentheses, it looks like it's going to go up three because it's a positive three. And then this does the stretch or compress because it is between 0 and 1, it's a vertical compression. So vertical compression. So let's see. I see the right, I see up, and I see vertical compression. So I would have written D-I-E-I -E is what I would have typed. All right, last one. So again, we change the sign, so it's going to be negative 8. So that's a translation to the left, 8. This would have made it go up, because it's positive, up 2. And then the negative in front is going to do a reflection. So this one's going to reflect across the x-axis. So up here, I would have done reflection, left, and up. So I would have typed A, C, E. And it's okay if the letters are in a different order. They don't have to go alphabetical. It'll still grade it. All right. Same set of skills, but a slightly different type of question. It says, which of the following graphs show reflection in the x-axis? So I have to fold across the x-axis. I'm going from the red to the blue. So if I'm folding on the x-axis, definitely not that one. This one has a fold on the y, but not on the x. So A is out. I'm looking at that one and I'm folding on the x-axis, that definitely looks like a reflection, so B has to be a correct answer. If I'm folding on this, definitely not. It maybe folds here, but not there, so C is out. And then this one's kind of weird. If I fold here, the red one would go down, 
and the red one would come up. So that actually works. So D is also an answer. All right, finally, we have to write an equation in this form. It's kind of a funky looking form, but we're going to go with it. Um, this is the original. So this would have just been our original zero, zero. So I need to figure out basically where did the vertex go or where did the point kind of in the center go? So the first one says the blue graph. If I think about that and I write the point, it's four, zero. So remember when I put the, the point in there, I'm going to switch my Y value when I put it, or my X value when I put it in for H. So blue would be Y equals F of X. I'm going to switch this value minus four plus zero. I really don't need the plus zero. I could write it as Y equals F of X minus four. Okay. The green one. All right. So the green one's here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify that vertex. So I'm out negative four and up two. And then remember for the x value, we switch the sign. So y equals f of x, switch it from a negative four to a positive four. And then the y is just whatever the sign that's there, plus two. Okay, the black one. So this one here. All right, it looks like we are out negative three and down negative four. So again, we're going to switch this sign. So y equals f of x. I'm going to switch it from a negative 3 to a positive 3 because we're going in and out of the parentheses. And then minus 4, the y value we get to keep. All right. And then finally, the purple one here. That is out negative 6 and... Sorry, I did that backwards. That is wrong. That is out negative 5 and down negative six. All right, so we've got y equals f of x, and then remember I switched this sign to put it in, so it's negative five, I'm switching it to positive five. This one we keep the sign the same.